I have an advent calendar that my mother-in-law made for me, and it's uh, a bourbon a day, like a little one of those little bottles. Nice. It's good to know that advent calendars could support alcoholism as well. That's yeah, really good. Most of the ones I've seen this year are that, right? <laughs> it's like, like I think Costco is like a wine one. I had a beer one from Costco last year. <laughs> Yeah, but it's a so straight bourbon on the rocks has been my go-to because we don't have any mixers or anything in our new house yet. So it's like, <laughs> well, I would here. Here's my hot yeah. recommendation for you: um, eggnog in Sinfire cinnamon whiskey, which I is better than Fireball for this specific purpose. Mm. Is a dangerous drink. This is a drink that will gross, be filled with Christmas regret. No, it's so good. It tastes better. I, I don't, don't believe you. It yeah. tastes better than normal eggnog, and it tastes better than straight cinnamon and whiskey married together. Well, you're kind of taking two. Power couple. You're kind of taking two not great things, <laughs> and so like, I hope it's marginally better than two average things combined, right? Like, I don't, I don't. It's fantastic, Thomas. Mm, it's a dangerous drink. Know. It's a dangerous drink. It is a drink to forget all of 2020 <laughs> because you will drink so much of it and not realize that you did. So are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've only had two, you know, pints or quarts of eggnog <laughs> and cinnamon whiskey this morning. So, <laughs> well, anyway, um, less <laughs> on drinking too much around the holidays and more on talking about, I think a subject that has been highlighted during 2020 um, with some of the challenges, but actually something that should be a, a something to focus on well, well beyond, and I think is really part of our new normal as we go forward. And that's, as I like to call it, networking from the waist up. So <laughs> networking in a virtual um, a, a virtual arena where we don't have events, we don't have face-to-face -face interaction yeah. that isn't through a computer screen um, or a camera. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's a big deal and something I think we wanna talk about. Yep, 100%. No, I think that was a big question mark after, gosh, what, we went to ASW, I was at WebinarCon in February? And then things locked up like immediately after that. So and that was yeah. a big question: like, how are people going to network? And the masterminds we all go to every, you know, throughout the year, and you know, clipping platinum, and all these things that had to get canceled. Yeah, and it's been good and bad. I think, right? I think it's there's it's a two sided coin for sure. Definitely, definitely. It's it's one of those things where I'll tell you, my wife loves it. She loves virtual networking because it means I could turn around and look at her and then turn around to a partner and, and just be networking and right. so I don't have to go anywhere. Um, but but yeah, it's I think some people it really has become something well, think, that's, that's- Sorry, before we go too much go. further, like I think anyone listening to this probably knows, but just in case you don't, um, masterminds and events are what kind of drives this industry forward from a deal making perspective, right? Like we're, you know, people are cutting deals in almost lifetime, right? Or at least like handshake deals at a bar or something um, to send traffic to each other's offers. You're meeting new affiliates, you're meeting new business partners, new agencies, all kinds of things at these industry events. So it's not just like a event trade show floor that sounds super boring. It's where you kind of need to be in some cases really break into the space, right? Definitely. I mean, you could, you and I both know that there's a plethora of stories where events make or break people's businesses in, yeah. in this industry. It's, yeah. it's pretty much a key. So when those got stripped away, it's like stripping away your core ability to get people to promote yeah. you, <laughs> um, which is horrifying. Let's yeah. see, that's a horrifying yeah. proposition. The great news though, is we definitely have found some ways to still get almost not quite as good, but still enough. Yeah. To keep things going. Thanks, Al Gore and the internet. Yeah, yeah thank you, Al Gore. Yeah. I thank him daily. Every single time I log in, just a <laughs> um, little Al Gore prayer. Uh, so before we jump into some of the um, some of the things that we've really learned that have been really successful for both you and I in different, in different realms, I think we should talk about some of the challenges. Um, what are some of the, the things that make it really hard um, when you're doing virtual stuff? I'm gonna say the first one, it's just concentration. You know, like in a virtual world, things are spread out. Um, the wide web <laughs> is wide versus yeah. an event where like, you're bumping shoulders with 10 different people that could promote your offer. They're just right next to you. You're right. smelling their yep. sweat. <laughs> and you know, it's, it's, it's such a different aspect. I don't know, what are some challenges that you've seen? No, I think that's the key one, right? People are not just, hey, we're at this event to do this, right? <laughs> to actually meet each other and talk to each other and have fun. Um, no, you almost have to, you're interrupting people more or people are interrupting you more because you're not in that mode at the same wavelength as they are. Um, other challenges, right, are just, gosh, how how do you build rapport over a Zoom call, right? <laughs> or, or just a phone call, right? It's it's something, you know, if you've got years of account management experience, you can do, but if you're kind of new to it, you're used to doing it in person, trying to take that same 
thing where you're not at this thing you can just all connect over and do it one to one, it gets a lot harder for people. Mm -hmm. um, and then two, how do you do it over text? Right, not, not like texting, although that is important too, but just like on a Facebook post or in a group or a Skype thread or whatever it might be. Like how do you actually network in these text environments where people didn't really have to do before? Or if they did, they at least knew this person from an event or something. So it was like a little bit, the ice was broken, but now you're trying to break the ice in this virtual setting. Yeah, I mean, it's really, it's going from no option to just bump into people and stuff like that mm -hmm. to like trying to online date with ever seeing before, but we don't have any platform or resource yeah. to tell us here's how you do it. And, and you're totally right, like a Zoom call is one challenge. How do you even get them to show up for a call? Like I wanna see their face beyond a profile picture. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that does become a huge challenge. And there's been some areas where it's worked and there's been some where it hasn't. Um, <laughs> I, I think you and I both agree. One of the things that's been really hard is Understanding shifting to virtual conferences yeah. um, was a was a big movement. It made a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I was a little bit hesitant, but I tried several different ones out. Yep. Um, more often than not, though, from a networking perspective, they were a flop. Um, yeah. Real, real yeah. challenging. So, what about you? How has that been for you? Agreed. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Why? I'd... Why does it just not seem to work? Well, I think you know. I think events in general were in a tough position, right? They had it all planned out to have a live event, which everyone was expecting to do, and then all of a sudden, it was oh, we think we have to go virtual. Do we have to go virtual? Or shoot, okay, yeah, we got to go virtual, right? And it's kind of this like scramble to move this in person to a virtual event, and what really translates well to virtual is content. You know, they can take a speaker and put them onto a you know a nice webinar, um, or kind of do that really well. But how do you recreate that intangible benefit of networking, which is you know if you hear about people going to these events, it's like oh yeah, I don't go to talk to the speakers, I go to meet people, right? It's like half the attendees are usually there just to meet someone, not to go to any of the events. So the issue for I think people, especially like in our positions, who are like more sales focused, like we need to find leads, or if you're an affiliate manager, you're looking for new traffic and stuff that is just gone, right? Like, how do you engage in a room that's not just self-serving if there's not a conversation happening around it already in like a chat room on a webinar? It gets really hard. And the hard part too is that, I think it was hard for event planners to bring that part to the table, right? Uh, I think the ones that have done it well are just doing it well by comparison. It's not a knock against anyone. It's just hard to do. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And I think one of the big things is um, the virtual medium is very one to one. Um, it, mm -hmm. It's one of the reasons from a marketing standpoint, it's so powerful. Dude, like, have you, did you ever get thrown into like those Zoom rooms? Like, oh, they're the worst. <laughs> like, oh, Zoom breakout room. And if it's anything more than like six people, it's a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. just, you're like, eh, 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 maybe. Um, yeah. And then I'm just going to work instead. Yeah. You know, and, and that's a big piece, right? Like when you're at an event and you're networking and you're talking with people, Everyone's in that moment. They're engaged. Mm -hmm. When I'm at home, you know, my kids will walk in, you know, something will pop up a notification. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm checking Stardew Valley over here, making sure all my <laughs> crops are good. You know, it's just you, your world of distraction. So as soon as you aren't engaged, because you're in like some Zoom room with 12 people, that it's impossible to not have verbal collisions left and right. And no more than really two to three people can actually have a conversation at once. Um, it becomes a massive challenge. And so where, yeah, there's right. Some have done it better from comparison. I, I have been to some where they shrunk those breakout rooms down and you kind of create some networking. It, it pales in comparison to being in person. Yeah. Um, and, and even the other thing too, is like remembering that and where we'll kind of talk about some of the bad things is just because you go to traditional virtual means such as Facebook, doesn't mean that you'll do it well. Um, if, if you're gonna go try and network and connect with people virtually, there's a lot of mistakes. And we'll, we'll kind of cover that in a second, but um, let's actually talk about, we've talked a lot about a bad, and now everyone's really depressed. Let's What's bring it back just up. More bad. Yeah, <laughs> just more, more bad. bad. Yeah. Well, let's talk about some of the wins. What are some, yeah. of, the, what are some of the things that have you've really learned and have been a huge benefit with virtual networking that you found? Well, I think it has been frustrating to not be able to like see my friends in the industry and stuff, but at the same time, like it's, it's made me realize like how disruptive travel actually is to our normal lives, quote unquote, right? So being more time at home, like all that kind of stuff has been great. Um, but other benefits to more like the work environment and actual networking piece is that there is like some wider exposure you can get online, 
right? Because like not everyone travels to events, like the ones that are quote unquote serious about it. <laughs> They're going to events, and you're meeting the movers and shakers, but not everyone is great in person. So you can actually meet some really cool people through these Facebook groups that are actually doing pretty well or through these Slack communities that are doing pretty well um, that you would never have met in or very unlikely to have met and actually engaged with in an in-person event. Yeah, yeah. And I think to echo that, and I kind of mentioned before, um, when you do meet some of these people, you're like, wow, I can't even, I don't know how I would ever have met you because yeah. we're not going to the same events. Even if we do, we might not ever go to the same event, um, but we meet in these virtual communities that are a little bit wider. When you actually get to connect, I know one thing I've always is a struggle at an event is like you can't talk to them too long, right? Like you yeah. have to, you know, you have this limited window. To, to connect with yeah, somebody. at least one person is wasting other person's time, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> well, oftentimes, yeah. Yeah, like it's, it's so it's one of those things yeah. where you know you have to balance and you're know, like, okay, well, let's get a card exchange. Let's do something later, right? Mm -hmm. But when you're doing it on these virtual means, you have the ability to really spend some time. It's much more one to one, yep. and so you get deeper connecting and deeper networking at a much more rapid rate. Um, so it's like you can't maybe you can't go as broad in a short period of time, but you can go very yeah. Very it does, deep it does seem have. like. I find like when I'm networking in person, right? Like you're often building a very personal relationship with someone if you're getting extended periods of time. Like let's say like a smaller mastermind, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's like, yeah, I'm gonna get to know you. On a Zoom call, I'm like, we're gonna talk business, right? <laughs> uh, which can, I guess you can argue is more productive, right? I find that if it's an in-person thing, I get to really know somebody, we'll do some really good business down the road. But if I'm meeting them, it's like, hey, we're here to talk business, right? And it's, it's a lot more structured. So yeah, you do go deeper to like the nuts and bolts much quicker and yeah. online, right? Or virtual. Yeah. So you get right into it. Yeah. Right <laughs> it's into like, hey, so what are you doing? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I think the other thing too, is we talk, it's scalable. What we were saying with the benefits of being home, mm -hmm. like I, I think we've all experienced travel fatigue. Mm -hmm. We're just your serotonin levels feel like they'll never get up again. You know, it's like, I just don't know if I'll ever feel energy anymore. <laughs> um, and you know, going through airports, missing flights, being away from, um, you know, at least for me, the people that channel me to want to work every single day. So, you know, being at home makes it a lot easier to keep those energy levels up and engage. Um, so kind of transitioning though, I think just real fast, we touched around it. Like, where do you do virtual networking? Yeah. So what we're talking about, I think one of the big ones you mentioned, Facebook's been a huge source for me, and I think for you as well. Um, and when I say Facebook, I don't mean your personal Facebook feed. <laughs> where, um, like you know, it can, it can. honestly, yeah. But I think the primary source is like that's that's a realm. So it definitely changes the way you post and engage on yeah. your own Facebook, um, or what I've thought about doing, just coming up with a business Facebook. Um, that way, you can never post on my personal one because I didn't never before. Um, uh, but a lot of these Facebook groups and communities that um, have gotten much more active um, <laughs> yeah. since twenty twenty. Yeah, in good um, and bad ways, right? Yeah, 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 yeah that's true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you know, like uh, conscientious marketers, uh, marketing mm -hmm. super friends, uh, d the direct response group. Mm -hmm. um, is it DRM group? Is that the name of the DRMP? Team? Direct response marketing partners. Partners. Okay, yeah. sorry. I, for I think it was. I think they're. I think you look in the URL slug for it. It's like yeah. email marketing group. That was the original name for it, and then they had to change it pretty quickly because not everyone does email. So yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, direct it's, response. Yeah, it's funny. I remember way back in the day when when that got created and D invited me, and it's like it's just like oh, okay, whatever. And it's it's grown know, to yeah, an amazingly like, huge thing. Never yeah. would have thought that would be as big as it is. But um, virtual events, there are times you can network at those, so um, they can be sources. Mm -hmm. um, it's obviously not the best of a previous event. There's a ability to do it. Um, you know, all the social, Instagram, LinkedIn, um, which I'm really excited to hear you on LinkedIn because I know you've been successful with some mm -hmm. LinkedIn stuff. Um, and then, you know, there are some very targeted groups that have come to address this problem where they create environments that are all about networking and yeah. making deals happen. Traffic Tribe is, is kind of what I put in there. Yeah, and some of the OG, about. you know, forums, the Stack About Money forums and stuff like that, yep. like are still and warrior form and stuff are still pretty vibrant. But yeah. 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 So um, any of you want to expand on there and talk a little bit more? Well, I think like, um, I think we've both gotten the most value, I would argue out of Facebook groups, mm -hmm. right? Um, I, I'd love to kind of just chew on like, how to do it right and how to do it not right. Yeah. Uh, I, this might be personally biased for me because like, I, I see people who post some things where they get zero engagement and they're just, it's like, uh, like if you just approach it this way, right? And I, I don't think it's me just, I'm, I know more than you. It's just like, I find on Facebook, you have to really come from a place of not just plugging, right? 
I, I think the the term you're looking for is be a human oh, on Facebook. Right. I know, yeah. yeah it's I, I tell you your time. A lot of times yeah. people think about this. It's almost like because you don't have the medium of your own voice and your presence, you forget that you are indeed a human being typing into a computer, not a robot right. that has some superficial, very very transparently sales message plug or or well, something that just mm-hmm. doesn't resonate with anybody. Yeah, like let's let's just chew on the direct response marketing partners yep. group. Like I think that one has been the more vibrant in our immediate very active uh, yeah very active tons of value added mm-hmm. um lots of good deals made there right what's funny to me right is that you see a lot of potential there all the big not all but right a lot of the big players are in that group or their affiliate managers are in that group um people are looking for new offers to promote and test but you'll see people post in there looking for affiliates and it just gets crickets sometimes and you'll see someone else post and huge engagement <laughs> Right, and you can start to kind of key in on what's working and what's not. Um, I've got my theories, <laughs> but this is a perfect time to share yeah, that theories. Uh, <laughs> like, so what I, gosh, I think people have to remember. You know, Facebook is largely a text medium still. There's stories, there's pictures, obviously, and stuff like that. There's video plugs, but if I'm just scrolling through, even a group feed, I'm not going to sit there and read. 500 plus words uh, about your offer, right? <laughs> or why it's the best blah, blah, blah thing for this customer and you're so excited and you've worked all this time on it and this is so cool and you, know, you just need someone to test and all these links are, and things are kind of buried in those huge blog posts basically. <laughs> like it's, it, and you're asking for like five different things in a post, right? Those I see get a few likes <laughs> yeah. and maybe a clarifying question. Um, the ones that get engagement are like, hey, I need this, right? (laughs) Here's why, and here's who I'm looking for, who's got it, right? Pretty structured, pretty simple, one ask, and that will get engagement. And it's not just a, I need help for no give, right? It's like, I've done all this, I've done this work, it's proven, it's tested, I need this traffic source tested, right? Or something like that, and here's my stats. It's easy to say yes to. Yeah, make it easy, thank you, yeah. Yeah, because the ones that are, hard to understand or hard to grok or it's like a 10 minute intro video and it's like i get it like uh, i ramble you can't too. see me rolling my eyes <laughs> just like, uh, you know. i mean I, I can be prone to rambling myself like this podcast is proving but um it's it's not the place for it right like you can have that one-on-one conversation and go into your backstory and stuff but to just put that into a group and expect someone to like resonate but then i have people like oh yeah i posted in the group i got nothing like oh show me what you posted <laughs> it's like yeah, <laughs> there's a reason, right? Yeah, well, especially as that volume increases, depending mm-hmm. on the activity of your group and what other posts are on there, but you're, you're totally right. And one thing I didn't say to preface before that, if you're entering a group like that, don't start asking for something. Yeah, like, give. Like so much of what you also see is the people that get the best engagement on their posts are people that regularly contribute mm-hmm. prior to that. These are the people that are providing value or they're asking discussion questions. Like put yeah. just, you know, ask people of like, like it could be something non-related, right? Like people are going to this for some reprieve and just some connection. So it doesn't always have to be business too, depending True. on the group. Yeah. Obviously look at the group beforehand. Don't like, don't go to some super serious group and then put oh, like, man. who thinks the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches are better on a salad? Than yeah, a, there's a know, balance like of just like memes, right? Versus, yeah. 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 Um, looking at you, James. No. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah. I think it's when you bring that value, then when you ask a simplified, simple yeah. question, it needs to be a simple ask easy to say yes or no to, that's when you could really um, bring a lot of value and, and extract a lot of value we, from those groups. Can we dig into that value thing a bit? Because you always hear, everyone always says, oh, you just need to add value. Just go in and add value. But no one, what is value? <laughs> like, what, <laughs> what the so hell is value? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think what you keyed in on though is like, read the room, right? <laughs> it's like, um, and don't just, and don't be a, taker, right? Is it Frank Kern that talks about the bucket, right? You kind of fill up your customer's bucket before you take from it. I don't know if it's him, but I know I've heard yeah. <laughs> it could be. So. Yeah, but it's, it's a similar concept with a group who's like a reliant around an objective or something. Like you want to give to that group before you try to extract from it, which you just kind of clarified. But man, like, yeah, it's it, it, the tone deafness I see people operate it with. It's just like, ah, oh, dude, like, even it's people I know, right? It's like, dude, I know you have a good offer. Like, <laughs> you're just not like, uh, I'm just like not really connecting on that level that this group needs you to connect on, or you're kind of getting in your own way half the time. 
Yeah, yeah, and I think that's a big a big piece. Though, is if you're going to enter into any group, whether it's you know a Slack channel, if it's Facebook, or it's a structured forum, um, don't as soon as you get in, don't feel like you have to just start typing and getting those fingers furious and just do whatever you want in there. Like really make sure you understand the cadence, who's talking regularly, what are the posts that are getting good engagement. If that person's posted, what other things have they posted? How often are they commenting? You could go in the side on Facebook, you could search their name and see all the content they contributed to. So it's well, cool now on Facebook, you just click on someone in a group, it'll show you all their oh, activity yeah. in that group, which I got super confused by when it first rolled out. I was like, yeah. do they not have <laughs> A life? <laughs> I was like, oh. I heard the same thing, yeah. same thing. I was like, what is this? No, but, it's just, but Facebook is obviously leaning into groups yeah. even more by making them almost like sub forums, right? Yeah. You'd, yeah. I'll, I'll give you examples. The conscien uh, conscientious marketer group. Yeah. But, you know, I, I entered in that. Group, right? I've yeah. I've barely commented and engaged because I'm still waiting for the time where I feel like it could bring value. Mm -hmm. Like I want to find those moments where I'm going to bring value, and not just lead with taking, and I could you know figure out what the voice is going to be. Um, so it's okay to be patient because the, the ROI is gonna be massive if you could be engaged in the group mm -hmm. versus just taking from it all the time. Yeah. So um, Yeah, avoid the shameless plug, right? Yeah. yeah. But plugging is not a bad thing, right? You can actually plug yourself. This is sounding awkward, but. <laughs> no, talk more about plugging yourself, Thomas. This is a corporate podcast. Yeah, I think yeah. we should really expand on it. <laughs> no, I, I think personally, like, I almost shy away too much sometimes from like, promoting myself in these groups because I don't want to come across as that. And I almost like leave too much on the table by being too conscious of it. That's something I'm aware of. I just still just can't get over it. I don't want to be like shameless, right? And I kind of have that fear mentality around that. So I kind of stop myself from jumping in. So I'd say if you're in that boat, like don't be afraid to jump in and like do the wrong thing. Like you won't know if you're doing the wrong thing until you do it. <laughs> and it's not like, yeah, you won't get a bunch of engagement on a post. It's not going to like ruin your career, right? So. Yeah, the great thing is people forget that stuff in Facebook mm -hmm. mediums way more than they do if you're really awkward no. in a live event. Oh, totally. No, so there's a guy, right? He posted in the director of marketing group and I was chatting with him. He's like, yeah, I'm also getting any engagement. Asked him to show me what he posted. Gave him some feedback, right? Next post he has, boom. Mike, like, he's like, oh, wow. Yeah, it's crazy how much engagement you get when you ask for something that benefits people. And he said it almost sarcastically. And I was like, well, yeah, like, <laughs> like that's the point uh, here. And his next post, he went back to the same stuff he was doing and he got nothing. <laughs> and I was like, well, I guess he's split yeah. testing it. But, guess, but yeah. you're right, the algorithm, if it's really unengaged, will push you down so fast in an active group um, that your your shame will be hidden very quickly. <laughs> yeah. um, so, so, so that's uh, one last thing I wanna kind of say that just a quick little hot tip I think that works really well, I found to work really well, um, is if you're responding and creating value on other people's posts mm -hmm. and comments, having a HubSpot calendar link has been really beneficial yeah. for me because it lives in those comments. I remember too, HubSpot is white labeling Calendly. Oh, right? they are? Yeah, so it's a Calendly, it's, yeah, it's oh, just they've wrapped it into know. HubSpot. But yeah, so Calendly or any of those kind of handy calendar yeah. links. Yeah. Cool, so, so I didn't know that, but having like a calendar link. And so it happens, I respond to somebody and say, hey, here's the tidbit if you wanna talk more here's my Calendly link in the comments. Well, obviously, if it's an engaged post, a bunch of people are seeing that comment, they're looking through the comments, and they're seeing my calendar link. I can't tell you, I've had so many times where I get random meeting schedules, which most of them are I productive. Say, I, I like avoid doing that because I don't want random meeting schedules, but. <laughs> most of them yeah. have been, but most of them, because I know what group and what my thread is on, That's it's fair. all in the same vein. So it's exactly what I want. So I'm just really strategic with the ones that have been like mis, like totally like, what the hell is that? was probably ones I shouldn't have been commenting on the post to begin <laughs> with. Um, so, but for the most part, like it's it's me providing a link and access to content that I want to be around. And so that makes it, sense, yeah. it's where I'm trying to get one lead out of that, I end up getting two, three sometimes. Yeah. And so um, I think that's a, a nice little tip that I found to be pretty successful. That's, Obviously not without its risk of getting say, some awkward yeah. meetings, but um, you know, it's easily solved by just following up with them like, you know, because they're in the group, I could see their name and say, hey, what were you hoping to cover in this call? Yeah. Which I learned after I didn't do that one time, and I was like, what are we talking together? <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyway, so kind of going through here, um, link, can we talk a little bit about LinkedIn? Yeah. I know that's mm -hmm. a standard virtual networking platform. It's I've a weird never, beast there. Yeah, it's, yeah. 
done i have a ton of linkedin connections because i just like to hit accept all the time <laughs> um, yeah. but yeah. it is of no value to me my my post engagements are like pff, you know nothing which is funny because i mean linkedin you can actually get some wider organic reach than facebook because they're not as greedy yet <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure that will tighten up soon but no linkedin's inter- interesting it's there's a lot of fluff gosh there's a lot of just noise that's just like HR people patting themselves on the back for hiring a homeless person, right? It's like, um, yeah, all kinds of like, yeah, the feed is quite dull most of the time. Um, yeah, for me. yeah, um, it's it's one of those things where it's like I don't feel as bad doing a shameless plug on LinkedIn, right? Um, but I still try to make it very valuable content, right? Where it's like, hey, this is actually useful if this is in your lane. You really just have to call it out in your post, like, hey, are you looking to do X? here's this video, here's this post, here's this content. Rich content there does really well, like a video or like the slider images, um, any kind of like rich rich content, I guess you'd call it, that can do really well. And don't be afraid to use hashtags in there because you kind of need to to get outside of your own network. Gotcha. And if you can, and the, the, the fun thing is, right, is that you can go trending on like hashtag affiliate marketing or something relatively easy um, if you get some decent engagement early on in your post, just because it's like they're not as uh, saturated, right? Like other places are. So you can actually get some wider exposure there. Um, the hard part is just, again, kind of filtering through the noise of LinkedIn because it's, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, well, I think when you think why people go there, it is still a platform built on networking, yeah. but mm-hmm. it's almost to a point that that becomes a saturation issue because there's people like me that, you know, before <laughs> coming and working at ClickBank, I use it as just a way to like get as many connections as I possibly can, agnostic of anything. I was just like, <laughs> I want all the connections, <laughs> right, you know? Right. So, um, you know, you get a lot of kind of empty um, contacts yeah. and connections very I'm, easily. Yeah, I'm pretty careful with who I accept on any platform, right? Like if it's my personal name on it, it's like. Ooh, get all high and mighty here, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> I just, it, it's like so much noise comes through with our positions here. It's just like I try to gate that a bit. So um, I, I am careful with it, but you still get some good reach with it. And the, cr- the great thing about LinkedIn is if you're going more B2B, it's like the place where you have to be, right? Like in our industry, Facebook's great because it's so much like, it's like a little beat, a little bit, right? There's a lot of like solopreneurs in our space that are like acting on their own behalf and things like that. But on, if you want to work with the bigger corporate clients out there, or like kind of be in that space, you almost need to be on LinkedIn um, and engaging there and putting content out there. But the cool thing is like if you actually fill up your feed with good content or use LinkedIn publishing for their articles, like they're giving really good organic exposure with those because again, it's not like Facebook where you have to pay to play basically right now. Yeah. I'm sure again, that will probably change. But yeah, <laughs> but well, it doesn't take advantage, yeah. right? So no, you bring up a really good point. I think uh, the BB side makes a ton of sense. Mm-hmm. There's a level of legitimacy, and I actually found the leads I've gotten from LinkedIn yeah. in my work. It's media agencies. There's some really good media exactly. agencies yeah. that are on there. Um, so so super successful. So as we kind of kind of pop in here, um, I think we're we're going towards some hot tips. I just want to talk some general things. This is pretty open. Um, it, but just some things in your virtual networking experience that you think have been really successful for you. Yeah. Then we'll finish with some things that you tried that didn't work at all. Uh, but yeah, just a couple quick hot tips. Thomas, you shared one with me that I think is, is super cool and definitely really valuable around video. So why don't you share a little bit? This is me literally physically, you can't see because we're in audio medium, oh, but there's, I'm, there's cameras around, I'm yeah. transitioning <laughs> over so to Thomas. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, video obviously is like the name of the game now in virtual networking. You know, once you're outside of the Facebook groups and things like that in the text mediums, um, you're getting on Zoom calls. You know, that's, gosh, Zoom stock has been nuts this year. Um, and things like that. What I love to do with video is try to make it as personal as possible right? Um, and this might dive into some account management hacks and stuff, but little thing, right? If you haven't heard of Loom, which you probably have because they've been doing very well too, is I would highly recommend Loom. It's a quick like video recorder. You can record your screen on it and things like that. What I love it for, like, is if it's not on Skype or something like that, is to do like personalized intros through a Loom video, right? So if I'm like making introduction to two people, just like doing a quick one minute long Loom video recording and just going like, hey, I'd like to introduce you to X, he's Y, they've done X, Y thing, like personal anecdote, blah, 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 right? Let me know if you need any help and send that link off. You can even embed like a little GIF in your email with it so it looks like something they can click on and it takes them to the Loom video. Um, great engagement on it, very personalized. People tell me they love it, they might hate it, I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> I get more good feedback from it than hate. 
I would say if you're going to lose Loom, keep videos relatively short, right? Kind of like we spoke to before. Um, my first mistake with using Loom was internally here at ClickBank, and I thought it'd be a great way to like communicate better when we use like Slack all the time and stuff like that with different teams and just came across like condescending and I was like doing like 10 minute long videos to like <laughs> talk to people that they sit through. Um, <laughs> you yeah. have nothing else to do. Here's this 10 minute video. Right, I, I, I thought I was being super efficient and this is great, right? We, don't, we can avoid meetings, <laughs> <laughs> but no. Um, so I use it for like, one to five minute long videos or like tutorials if you need to show someone something specific it's really good for that kind of thing too yeah well and now that they have the um the professional they have the five minute yeah. cap without having to pay for extra anyway so and gosh i honestly i don't know why you wouldn't pay for the extra just i mean i don't think you need to go beyond five that often but the extra capabilities for like 10 bucks a month is yeah. worth it <laughs> and our funny. affiliate link for loom is right at the bottom yeah. <laughs> no, they're, they're great um well one thing on the video that i do think um and i i did this and, um after listening to talk from mike koenig where he he had the sales high ticket sales process for like six figure closes but he did this thing where they record videos after i had calls with people and he would say that I was thinking about you and what would help your business or something, some sort of thought and start with that and you'd share some sort of value nugget that was actually from the previous call. Um, but I found that to be something that was like, just made so much sense. And I was like, oh my gosh, create a quick Loom video or you can record on Zoom and send them the, mm -hmm. the you know, the cloud link grant, their storage constraints that. But, um, you know, just doing like a quick thing of like, here's a video, it's my face. It's different than a phone call. It feels yeah. very personal. Make sure that you have your ratios right. Like it's not like the top of your nose and up <laughs> um, or the bottom of your nose and up. Like it's, it's, you know, it's really framed to you. And talking and sharing that, it creates a really awesome experience um, to, to close things and connect with people. Yeah, well just, I mean, every native platform else has that now. Now, right on Facebook Messenger, Instagram Messenger, everything they've combined it now. Right, you can just do a quick thirty-second long video recording. So instead of like typing "Happy Birthday" on someone's Facebook post, I'll send them a quick "Hey, Happy Birthday! Trust you're doing well. Like, hope we can connect soon." Yeah, you know, blah blah, and send them a quick video. And like, people get a much bigger kick out of that than just posting on their wall kind of thing. Mm, that's smart, Thomas. Yes. It, you can't take that for at least three months. That's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I'll have to yeah. figure out how to make that work in Messenger because I'm surprised. At least once a month I do something on Facebook that <laughs> reminds me that well, I'm really thing, bad at Facebook. So the thing is you can do this on any, like Skype has this, right? People don't yeah. really leverage it too much on Skype. And you have to, <laughs> what I usually end up doing on accident is accidentally starting a video call because icon looks similar. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you can do a video recording on Skype to send to. So I'll do that the same kind of thing with Loom, but if it's a Skype introduction, which happens more than half the time, it's a quick video that's right there in the feed that people can watch. Yeah. So the great part is that if you don't put any text, they have to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what yeah, else you're like, talking about. Yeah. Um, I like that, I like that a lot. Uh, speaking of video, just a quick thing I don't like, I wanna mention, mm. just a quick plug, and this is totally me. I have no empirical evidence on it. It's a feeling I have and I wanna say it. Don't use virtual Zoom oh, I was, was going to bring that up too. Thank you. I yeah. hate them. And yeah. it is like literally telling me that I can't trust you because you're hiding something from me. I, I don't know I, what's behind your house. A meth lab? I'm not sure. But I hate it. I hate it so well, much. I, I agree. Like I, I, I imagine people in more corporate environments might disagree, right? It's like, oh, I want to look professional. I don't want to show something if I'm in front of a big exec or something. I still disagree with that. Like, I think we're all in this together through this, these strange times of COVID, right? I don't care if you see my, you know, laundry <laughs> it's, or my cat calling, crawling all over me. Like we're all in this. Um, it's add some personality to your videos and to that yeah, one-on-one -on -one yeah. connection. Totally agree. Well, if you want to have a more corporate setting, they have little pop-ups you could put behind people as a mm -hmm. backdrop. It'll still look nice, but this like fading in and out where your yeah. skin seems like it's melding to your background is not <laughs> delightful. Yes. And I just, no. total pet peeve of mine. Um, I have been known to make fun of people on Zoom calls for their digital backgrounds, but it's because I'm like Thomas, sometimes I can be a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, just a little side note there. Anyway, you are about to say something? I was gonna ask, how do you get beyond just the Hey, how you doing? You know, <laughs> like yeah. you're like, we're getting on a Zoom call, right, or something. It's like, oh, hey, yeah. Like, so, what's new with you? Like, <laughs> like oh. do you have any like lead-ins you like to use, or things that get you better and like kind of kick off to a call, and, like kind of get things going? Well, I love to mention anything in their background. Which yeah. is funny because I put nothing in my background. It's literally just like a white wall, which yes. actually says a lot about me because that's what I like in life. I like my wife hates it, but I wish my house could just look like a sterile clean room, mm. just white walls everywhere. This explains the eggnog. <laughs> yeah, right. okay. But yeah. um, but but you know, making a comment about that, um, I think 
like you said before, it's very business oriented. So I just like to sit there and, you know, you do the, hey, how are things going? See how things, whatever people say and say, well, just so you know, here's, well, two things I'll do. First, I'll say, here's what we're going to cover today and just kind of try and jump into it mm -hmm. um, and not feel uncomfortable about it. Because if you feel uncomfortable making that jump, they'll feel uncomfortable <laughs> with you making that jump. Um, the other thing I do oftentimes is I like to pre-frame the experience they're about to have, meaning that I have four kids at home. So they are likely to I've heard them in the background. burst yeah. in and yeah, make mm -hmm. sounds or crawl in. I was just like, hey, just so you know, there might be children afoot. Um, and so that's, again, another thing just to engage with them, to create a personal relationship. Um, and so people could laugh and make jokes on it. And then you're human for a little bit and then you transition. Yeah. In. So if like that makes that. sense. What about you? What do you do to kind of get past the awkward staring at each other's foreheads virtually? <laughs> yeah. Well, typically people are like, oh yeah, how you doing? Right. That's kind of that soft talk. And if someone asks you like, oh, how's it going? Right. Um, so just like, oh, it's good. <laughs> right. It's, it's fun to just like share a win you've had that day or something or just a hat or that week. Right. Oh, it's good. You know, I just, you know, just onboarded the big client. Right. Or I just did this or just made a great introduction to somebody. Right. Anything that or it could be personal. Right. Just hit a personal goal on X. Right. Um, it's a little different than just saying, oh, I'm good. You no. Know, and it can give like either a it either builds you up if you're trying to like sell them as a client and like, hey, oh, wow, he's doing some good work. Or it's a great way to kind of connect on a personal level. Like I broke 100 in golf for the first time. Hey, sweet. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> like, that's that's a really yeah. good way. I, I will tell you, I've, um, COVID in 2020 has got me to change the way I answer that question out of pure mm -hmm. joy to making people confused. Um, so, <laughs> um, you know, because most of the time when we ask it, we don't really want the answer. So I will give you the answer of how I'm exactly doing. Right. So my most common one is eating too many chocolate covered pretzels um, yeah. from Trader Joe's. And, mm. you know, no, I'm, I'm glad you don't I have to wear sweatpants, not because I'm wearing I black can. for a reason. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's slimming. So, you know, making making jokes, right? Just yeah. making jokes. Make people laugh um, is always important. So I'm um, kind of going into do we have any other hot tips? I don't really I mean, the last thing I want to say from a content perspective, just when you're talking about, I think the key to virtual networking that I've seen is you really even more than when you're in person leading with valuable content. So sharing something anything that you think would be valuable to the audience that you have has been the biggest key for me is I just go out and maybe even too much sometimes just try and give content and value at all cost. Um, because one, those mediums live out everywhere. They yep. just stick around. So you mm -hmm. get an organic lift to it. And two, it just, it just makes it more approachable and was otherwise very impersonal medium. So if you could create the content that has like a spice of you in there, it makes you seem more approachable. It allows people something to engage in. And it sets a frame that you're not just here to laugh and joke, but you actually bring value to their business and their life. And yeah. so I think that's one thing that's been really key for me um, that I would just wanna say, hey, if you're out there, you're struggling, start producing content and putting it out in the world, like a podcast. Yeah, I agree. No, I'd say the last thing is don't be afraid to punt a meeting if you're not in a good space for it, right? Uh, I've had a few where it's, I mean, just remember that we're all on COVID, no one's traveling. <laughs> like our schedules are pretty standard right now, right? Like if you're stuck somewhere on a bus or like, you know, in the grocery store or something, like don't feel like you have to jump on the call, like just reschedule, like it's yeah. okay. Um, that is that because a distracted call is worse yes. than one that gets rescheduled. Right. Yeah. No, it's, I, I guess, right. When schedules are tighter, yeah, you might try to make it work and things like that, but everyone's stuck at home, right? It's not like, yeah. So take that for what you will. Yeah, no, that's, that's good advice for sure, for sure. Well, perfect. Well, everybody, as you're sitting out here in your sweats, um, staring at a Zoom screen, um, <laughs> hopefully listening to this and enjoying it, we appreciate oh, sorry. your time. Oh, you have another thing? I had one last hot tip oh, for video stuff. Um, gaming headsets are surprisingly mm. good if you're on the Zoom calls a lot, right? They're more comfortable, they have better mics than like the standard stuff, because um, laptop mics suck, right? And audio is super important. You actually want to come across uh, in a video call, right? So, yeah. That is, <laughs> that is great advice, actually, yeah. yeah. And then from a cost perspective versus getting like professional sound equipment, you could get for like 150 bucks a really solid gaming. Yeah, even, yeah, headset. yeah, anywhere from like 50 to 150, like you can just get some solid gaming headsets. And they don't all, like mine's, you know, that big black one, but it doesn't really look like a gaming headset. It just has the. No, it does, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like the weird turtle peak green one. And yeah, stuff right. Yeah. Um, well, awesome. Well, th that is a great tip to leave things off of, um, especially focusing on, focusing on audio. Um, but again, we always appreciate you. Thank you for listening. Please like, subscribe, review, continue to listen, um, and we'll continue to bring value. So you have a great day. And hopefully we'll be able to network with you, not virtually in the 
and soon air quotes <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah the end of 2021 we'll see some people and um in, in person and all looking totally different it's gonna be like a high school reunion like That's a legit weird. high school yeah, reunion people are still afraid to hug yeah <laughs> well i was afraid to hug to begin with so true. nothing's changed yeah, there true. <laughs> <laughs> now cheers y'all happy right. scaling yeah